Um, yeah, uh, my name is uh, Matt Cheney, and this is uh, Drupal Development Best Practices uh, for Building Sites on Pantheon. Um, thanks all for coming. This is a two-part super session uh, here at the camp where I'm going to hope to sort of show all of you a lot of the stuff that Pantheon does as a development platform and get in really to some specific sort of training around how to use it, how to like uh, build Drupal sites using really great best practices and workflow tools and stuff like that. So this is definitely an interactive kind of session. So if you have a question or something you want to like sort of get into, just uh, hit me up or raise your hand. I'll repeat the question so everyone else can hear and we can go from there. Um, feel free also to follow along. Everything I'm showing you, um, internet notwithstanding, uh, will be able to be sort of followed along. So uh, without further ado, so about me, um, as I said, my name is Matt Cheney. Uh, I was one of the co-founders of Pantheon Systems, which makes uh, the Pantheon platform, which is what we'll be talking about today. I love Drupal. I've been doing it a very long time. I'm a big believer in, in open source and in sort of reusable components. And I think that the internet will one day use a lot more open source software than it does now for building websites. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I also really want other people to love and appreciate Drupal. And one of the sort of founding principles of Pantheon is that like a lot of Drupal development is t too hard already. It's too hard to figure out which modules and which hooks and how to get all of the PHP stuff in order. And just to make even a basic website requires a lot of work on the Drupal side to make it the way you want. And that um, that's on top of all the hosting and like development tools that you normally need to set up. And what Pantheon is really trying to do is level up people so that they can focus on making really great websites and sort of avoid having to worry about a lot of the you know, sort of server side stuff, setting up Git and getting high performance tools installed and really like start people at a higher level. Like this is the kind of thing that like back in, in 2005, 2006, I wish I had when I was doing Drupal development because I spent a lot of time banging my head against how do I get these, these different systems set up. I'm not a system administrator. I don't really want to be one um, as a developer, but Pantheon lets that happen for everyone and that's really good. So. Um, what we're going to talk about today, the training, it's definitely a little bit, a bit loose, but in general, we're going to talk about getting started with Pantheon, sort of intro to how you get accounts, what that looks like, how you get your keys set up, uh, something you know, pretty straightforward. Then we're going to talk about some of the major features of the platform, show you in the interface how you would do a backup or how you would sort of set a security, security setting uh, for standard off on the, on the development site. Definitely talk about version control, how like to love and, and use Git for all of your things. Um, talk about the different environments of Pantheon. We have a dev and test live environment. Sort of talk about why you want to use each one, how that works, and move stuff between them. And then we'll uh, talk at the end sort of about how to export Drupal configuration to code, how you use the features module and exportables and hook up data in and stuff like that. Uh, also sort of in between all of this, really sort of highlight some of the stuff that I think is really good best practice, stuff about performance or security or other things that people might need to know for Drupal sites. So. Uh, that's generally the plan. Uh, we have, we'll definitely break when like the other sessions break. So if you weren't impressed with what you saw or you learned everything, you can leave. Um, there'll probably be some new people coming in, so I'll do a sort of quick intro. We get back started again. But um, in general, hopefully, we'll learn learn a lot about the Pantheons today. All right. So as I said, Pantheon is a development platform. This is our front page of our website, getpantheon.com. We try to spar you know do a lot of stuff here to really help people learn what we're about, but the, the actual core product, if you sort of click on the login link at the top, you jump over to, to this page. And this is the Pantheon dashboard, and this is where most of the actual work, uh, work goes on. So you get to a front door that looks like this, you hit up uh, an account, I have this demo account set up, and you log in. If you don't have an account already, you can uh, just register for one, they're free to set up. You have to confirm your email address just so we know you're real, but those are relatively easy to get. And um, then you jump into a dashboard that looks like this. And this is where, as a Pantheon sort of user or developer, you spend a lot of your time in this page and then on the individual sites page. Because this is supposed to be a one-stop shop for like your Drupal development needs. Like you can create a bunch of different sites. You can have them all in one place. It all has a very consistent interface. So the stuff here that's relevant, we've got some information on the account here. This is just general password and, and name settings. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy here. The, the bit down here is sort of interesting. I've actually gone ahead and already added my SSH key. But if you're using um, SSH keys to do like ser uh, server connections, Pantheon has a really great way to support that. You just sort of go ahead and paste your public key right here. And then it'll go upload it to the platform. 
And that will mean that you can use then your public key for any of the operations on the platform. You can use it to push code. You can use it to uh, log into stuff. You can use it um, uh, to, 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 to access like, the larger, larger set of sites that you have. And any site on Pantheon that's connected to your account, this key will work for. If you're not familiar with SSH keys, um, if you go to add, you, there's a nice article we did just about how to make them and how to use them. Uh, they're pretty useful just in general. You sort of generate, generate them. There's a private one and a public one. You give us the public one, and you're off to the races. But um, my computer's called the circus hitched to a whirlwind. I already have that key, and we're good to go. All right, so what you really want to do with Pantheon, of course, is you want to create sites. That's what it's really great for. Um, it's free to create sites as a developer. All the stuff I'm showing you is free up until the point that you add a live domain and you want to like put it on the internet for real. Um, you can have two or three development sites to start out, but you can always ask for more if you're using it and, and, having, um, uh, and having a good experience with it. So let's go ahead and just name a site. Uh, all the sites are, are sort of, you, get, you give it a machine name for a development URL, and it's um, uh, .gotpantheon.com is domain name, all the sites that have been spun off get. Um, that was because early on, our, our main domain name is getpantheon, and we thought it'd be really cool if all the sites that people had on Pantheon were gotpantheon. But it's, it's actually caused a great deal of confusion for people. <laughs> well, you know, clever as, as we thought that was. So uh, that's definitely a, a sort of gotcha on the platform. But um, what's happening right now, though, this is, this is the time saver right here. Like, I said I wanted you know, my great Drupal site.gotpantheon.com. Our system's going out, and we're provisioning all of the parts of this that you're going to want to use for Drupal development. So we're, we're setting up the permissions so that like, my account has access to all the stuff here. We're making sure that there is a development, test, and live environment for each of the sites. We'll talk about those pretty extensively, but it's a very good best practice to have to not obviously work on the, the production live site, because you might break stuff. So you work on the development site, have a testing site to test, and then push to production as a sort of workflow. Um, it's setting up Varnish for a sort of a reverse proxy cache to be really high performance. Um, uh, for, the, for the people who access your site, I'll talk about that as well. It's setting up solar bindings. It's making sure you have Git for version control. And it's doing a lot, setting up MySQL databases and provisioning PHP worker processes. It's sort of getting in, I mean, like 45 seconds really to the point where I have all my sort of hosting environments and development environments set up. Now I actually get to decide um, what kind of Drupal site I want to have. And we have on the platform, obviously, Drupal 7 and Drupal 6. Uh, Drupal 8 is coming uh, once we get a, some, some more stable sort of releases. And these are versions that are the latest and current, obviously, from the Drupal.org. The versions that, you're, that we'll be installing with each of these is, is, basically, is basically vanilla Drupal core with a couple performance um, and like settings modifications we use for Pantheon specifically. Nothing affects your development environment at all. And so you can start with just the general sort of starting states. <laughs> You also have, which are near and dear to my heart, a number of Drupal distributions. Uh, these are sort of package versions of Drupal that have some extra modules and some extra themes, so they do stuff out of the box. It's not just like a bland Drupal, here, what do I want kind of site. It's, you know, hey, I can get an e-commerce store with Commerce Kickstart just by clicking this button, or I can get a, an internet from Open Atrium by clicking this button, or if I'm a nonprofit, I can get a nonprofit site, or if I'm a government. Um, organization and get a government site. And all of these are, are supported by various community companies or organizations for the, the, the different distributions. And those are cool to check out because you can just click a button on Pantheon and see what they are. Um, and if they work for your use case, that's awesome. You save a lot of time. But a lot of developers will want to you know, start with just Drupal core st straight up to, to do development. Um, the other thing you can do when you're starting a site is if you have an existing site, something that you want to like bring over to Pantheon or you've been developing locally, we have uh, pretty strong migration tools. So you can just sort of point us at your code base um, and then a database and, and a files archive if you have those for your site. And we'll actually go ahead and, um, and, and provision your new site with your sort of existing Drupal code and, and Drupal database and stuff like that. We'll update it to the latest version of Drupal. We'll put it on our sort of special Drupal 7 installation or Drupal 6 installation. But this is a great way if you're working on a site right now and you're like, some of the stuff I'm showing you today is useful. You want to really check it out for serious. Um, go here to the sort of uh, import manually, and you can actually go ahead and you can either upload upload the file if you have you know relatively small files, or you can put it up like on a on a Dropbox or an Amazon S3 or something, and 
and you can just put the URL in, and then we'll download it, suck it in, and, and do all the the, up, uh, the importing, which is very cool. But we'll start from scratch here, and we'll go just we'll go Drupal seven, because um, that's the the latest and, and greatest um, stable release. And what this is doing now is this is saying, okay, we've got Drupal seven, let's go install it. Yeah. For that upload, you just send a tarball. Yep. Just, uh, you just send a tarball. We're 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 pretty or a zip file. We're trying to be pretty smart. Our system will suck it in. It'll look at the, it'll, it'll, it'll uncompress it, unarchive it, and look at all the files. And it'll be like, OK, you gave us a tarball. Are you running Drupal 6 or Drupal 7? Or something we don't know, then we err. But if it's 6 or 7, we figure out what version you're on. Uh, and then once we figure out what version you're on, we upgrade you to the latest version. And then, um, and then drop you in, um, which uses some, some, some magic. Um, but it's, it's pretty reliable, and it's one of the things where um, that's a nice way to sort of check out, especially some of the performance tools. We have a lot of folks who are like maybe having some performance issues on their site because they don't have Varnish set up correctly, or they want to try Redis, or they have some other sort of needs, and they can just drop it in here, and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, so I went ahead and, and set up the site. And now we're dropped into the, the dashboard. And this is where like the sort of second screen that you'd spend most of your time in the sort of Pantheon world on the screen. So this is. Um, this, this is a site that's using a Backbone JS on a sort of technical level. So a lot of the interactions are very fast, um, which is very important to developers who aren't looking to, to waste a lot of time. Um, it is back-ended to like a, a larger Drupal 7 uh, install that handles some of the, some of the, the templating and um, some of the other stuff as well. It's a, a, a nice piece of work. And it changes a lot. Like, so if you've seen Pantheon before, even this dashboard before, there's definitely new features that are being, being, um, being added. And that's the kind of stuff that's really great just to, you know, we have a team of three or four people who are just out actively working on how do I make this, this experience better? How do I add new features people want? And, um, you know, one of the, there's a couple of sort of new features if you stick around for the second part of this that I'll demo, um, including using feature branching and some other stuff for a, for a, for a tease for later. But um, uh, for now, this is the basic stuff you get. And sort of to the three environments that you get, as I mentioned, so you get a dev environment. This is uh, dev-migrate-drupal-site.gotpantheon.com. And if I go to that, that site, you'll actually see this is the version of Drupal just uh, before it's actually been installed, because we haven't done anything yet. We just deployed the code. And I can go ahead and, and just run the standard install here. And this will actually go through and, and install it. It's running in the Rackspace cloud. Technically, there's, there's three or four servers that are sort of making this happen. The, there's got a slice of the database, a slice of PHP, a slice of a few other things to get all this sort of, sort of squared away. But to you, it's just the dev environment. You get that special URL, um, and you go from there. And we'll go ahead and just get this all squared away. All right. And we'll check for updates and go. And then um, you know, within now a matter of like five minutes or so, 10 minutes maybe, because I was talking, we've gone from effectively no Drupal site to now I have a Drupal site running on the internet. I've got a URL that I can, uh, th I can send around. And this is now my development site. And I've got, I've got this up and running in a really great environment. And that's like, I think that's one of the real values of Pantheon is that stuff happens really fast and stuff happens in a very like easily supportable, repeatable way. So because we have this thing there, everything's good to go. We now have this dev site up here. Awesome. Okay. So this is the dev site. This is the dev URL. And um, you can sort of see. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll add a couple pieces of content just so that like folks are, are aware of sort of it's all working. Um, my great node. We'll get some, uh, some sample text. I always use this veggie ipsum, which uses nicely uh, good vegetable words um, and some Latin. Better than straight up lorem ipsum. I took a lot of Latin in high school, and it was a little bit frustrating. This is better. Um, it's got another piece, um, another node. And this is, I mean, this is the kind of like site building stuff that like if you're adding content for a client or for your own site, you do. And um, I guess I had to put it on the front page. All right. OK, so now we have a couple, a couple nodes. The database is sort of ready to go. And um, this is the dev site. So let's talk best practices. So this is my develop, development site. One of the really good uh, best practices for when you're doing development is you don't want this site to be indexed by any sort of search engines. Like you're still working on it. It'll have content that's going to be the same as live. 
and you want to lock down this site so that no one else can use it. So a really good best practice is in the robots.txt file. This is um, a special file that like Google or, or, um, or Bing or some of the other folks who are doing search engines will look at to see which pages should go into the public search, search index. And robots.txt will basically say what it is. So this is a pretty basic one. If we go to our main website, which is running live, it's providing a little more, a little more information. So it's saying, hey, you know, sh like have the search engine see most of the stuff, but this allows some of these specific Drupal files that you don't want in the um, in the index, but but have most of the stuff be al be allowed. In this case, we're saying disallow, disallow everything. Nothing on the dev the dev instance will show up in a search index because we're specifically saying not to. And that's a really good best practice that I've definitely seen a lot of dev sites that don't do this, and that creates a little bit of of, of frustration for some for people you're making the site for because they Google the name of their their organization and they'll see like the dev site on Google or people are trying to find the blog posts that they've written and they find the dev site and it's in whatever state it's in and et cetera, et cetera. So this is something Pantheon does sort of just magically. It works on dev and test. You have this kind of like robots.txt stuff. As soon as you go live, um, it'll turn into to the, the full uh, robots.txt from Drupal. So that's a nice best practice just to keep the dev site out of, um, out of the search indexes. Um, if, if you modify it in Git, it will be overridden for dev and test. We're not gonna, we don't let that be exposed at all. Um, you can modify the roast of TXT in Git, and then for the production site, it will affect that. But um, you, it'll only, the, all changes to robot.txt -T will only work for production sites, for live sites. We override it in dev. Um, and that's just, to, that's just to protect people, because we don't see a lot of use cases for having um, the dev site in the search index. Because people want that kind of stuff to be private. Um, but the other way you can sort of help to protect your dev site is if you're working on something that's a little sensitive, like you don't want other people to discover the dev site, not like necessarily out of Google, but if they're looking specifically for it and you're working on maybe a secret project or something that's a little sensitive, um, there's, a, there's a couple other things you can do to help or protect your site. So because you can see the pattern here is, no, is noticeable. So you can sort of maybe start guessing some URLs if you're sort of clever that you might want to see. And if you want to keep your stuff private, obviously roast.txt helps. The other thing that we do is we have this option here on the dashboard um, around like sort of accessibility of the environment. So you can see it says public right now, which means anybody who goes to this URL, including you in this room, will see this. But if I click on this, it'll actually give me some settings to actually lock down this environment. So in like the Apache world, this is an HT password. Um, uh, uh, option. Um, we use Nginx, so it's a little different, but it's, it's sort of a standard auth on the site. So what we can do is we can go ahead and add a, a username and password to the environment. Um, you can see Drupal will hide it so no one knows. And you hit lock environment, and this is actually going to go out on our back end, and you can see there's a little job that's run now. All the little jobs that are sort of happening on Pantheon, you can sort of see the history of when they happened and if they're actively running. And that's helpful if you have a sort of long running kind of job. Um, some of the backups, if you have a lot of files, could take a while. And just seeing all that stuff in action is very cool. But because we've added the, the environment, if we were to say, go back there, it's going to uh, throw up the authorization required window, require us to, to add a username and password um, to see the site. And that's really great just from a, oh, um, from a security perspective, because now I've got a site that if someone else was to stumble upon it, they, um, they'd have to type that password. But it's the kind of thing that um, you know, once I type it, I can develop and ha have a really good time of it. So that's a, that's a good best practice. We definitely recommend that for anything that's, that's a little bit sensitive. Um, and you can, of course, you know, uh, anyone, you can always come back and unlock it if you want later. And that'll work for the dev environment. And then the other environments have similar kinds of controls. We'll show you. OK. So. So we have our site. We're up and running. Um, let's, talk, um, let's talk what's next. OK. So the next thing that I think is sort of helpful is just to sort of walk you through this, this sort of board here. So we're in the dev environment. This is the URL. You click on it, it opens up the site. Um, the code is the most important piece of the interface for the development because you want to be able to see the kind of codes that you've commits that you've done. Right now, there's only one commit that's from uh, Pantheon. That was the initial commit, and if you click on this, 
it'll so show you sort of like um, all the different stuff that was changed. Um, and that's just adding Drupal 7 to your repository. So you only have one commit. That's pretty easy. But we'll eventually want a lot more. So one thing that we can do is to actually add and change code on this. There's sort of two modes to, to that you can work, git and SFTP. And we'll cover both of those pretty extensively. But this is sort of how you get the code. And this is information to help, help, help you with that that we'll go over. Um, but code is most important. That's why it's, it's sort of primary. The other stuff we have, we have the status page. This is sort of a work in progress. This is us providing as much information about your site as possible. So there's not a lot of you know, things that's really happening right now because it's just new. Like the database is, is, is small. There's, there's, there's no other errors. But as you sort of start adding stuff, like you add the Redis bindings or you have a lot of files, additional checks will show up here. And that's just similar to Drupal's update status sort of thing. You, know, get the, you want green, green and uh, you want everything to be up to date. So this is a place where we're sort of trying to provide as much health and information about your sites as possible. Um, workflow, this, these tools we'll talk a lot about. These are basically the ability to sort of move, move c code or files or databases between the various environments or off the platform entirely. So workflow is something we'll use to push the database around. We'll show you that. Um, or it's also used if you want to re-import your site. So if you like made an import, made some changes you weren't necessarily happy with, you could go ahead and, and re-import it here. Um, and then you can take it out uh, if you want to go to a different, a different platform or you want to just have a local backup of this kind of stuff. And then wipe will just get rid of all of it um, so that you, don't, you can sort of start over. Wipe is super good if you're developing install profile or something you want to sort of test out the install process. You can just wipe the, wipe the database and files, keep the code, and then you can run through that, no problem. Um, there's an error section that'll bubble up your PHP errors, if there are any. Um, I've never actually seen this, you know, any of these errors because my code's perfect. But, um, but it, uh, it, it's great because it will record all these for development so that like, you can see sort of what other, other people who are developing on it, stuff they might have run into. But it's really important on the live site because if there's been an error and you have a user that's like, hey, your site broke, if they didn't like copy the error, take a screenshot, it can be really hard to figure out what their error was. Um, having a, like, a log of all of them right in the dashboard is really valuable because then you just get that, ac that information um, without having to, having to go, go re-replicate -repl it again. Um, and it, there are some cool stuff. We'll make a few errors maybe when we're, we're coding this just to sort of show you. But it's, it's a good record of all the stuff here. There are more error logs. I'll also show you in more information. But the, this is the PHP error log, which is sort of most, most valuable. Uh, domains are something that you'll probably deal with sort of a little later when you're sort of going live. This is the part where like, you have to pay for the service. The idea is that um, you get this awesome dev dash migrate Drupal site dot got pantheon dot com domain. Uh, but if you want to add your, another one, a custom one, you sort of uh, you sort of go through the pricing and, and and pick a plan. This is really not for dev or test. It's not that helpful, but this is where live's really helpful. So you can you know take live dash uh, migrate Drupal site dot com and change it to you know my site dot com, and then you're off to the races. Um, we also have the ability to have SSL. That's also uh, an add-on because we have to spin up a separate public IP for you. Uh, in the in the Rackspace cloud, um, but that's pretty cool. You just paste in your SSL cert, and we'll go ahead and get all that security stuff set up for you. We have this backup interface that's pretty nice as well. So for folks who are interested in, you know, hey, I want to make sure that my development environment's backed up because I'm making a lot of changes, and you know, I may make a, make some make some problems. You can always create a backup just on demand by clicking Create Backup, and it actually will go out and 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 back up the code, back up the databases, and back up the files all right there. And that was actually pretty fast because the site's pretty small. It takes more time for the bigger sites, but you get obviously more backup. And this is really nice because each of these, these pieces can be restored. So if I want to like go back to a previous version, no problem. Or if I just want to like download, download it for some reason, I can go ahead and um, if I click on the little uh, link next to it, I can either hit a direct download, which will actually just go, you see, downloaded it to my computer. Or I have this like longer link. Um, that has a, a signature in it for security, and I can like you know curl or w get that link if I want, and that's really nice because you can then pass those pass those URLs around. They expire relatively quickly, so you can't like hold them for too long. But it's the kind of thing that if you need to like actually take your uh, take take your database and, and pull it down for local development, that's a great way to do it. Um, you could also uh, schedule backups if you need to have you know say. 
uh, one run every 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 day or every hour or something like that. You get a lot of control over over how the backup schedule works, and that's good for development stuff. With you know when you're working on it, in case you need to go back, but obviously super important for live sites. Um, and then the security stuff, which we talked about, but. That's sort of the, the sort of world for the for the actual um, uh, sort of controls. There's also some information over here. So the information on the security lock is right there, and we have a bunch of connection information. We'll walk through each of these different pieces pieces today. This is just how you get access to you know to Git, to the database, to the SFTP, to the logs, and that kind of stuff. All that information is right here in the connection. Um, and then the the button that's probably used the most on the site is this clear caches button. That'll actually go off and it runs a Drush Clear Caches operation to just sort of get everything, uh, get everything reset. This is helpful if you're used to running sort of a cache clear, a class clear operations within Drupal. Putting it on the dashboard makes it really easy. You just click this and it'll clear all the Drupal caches on your dev site. It's also really smart, so it'll also clear the varnish cache on, this, on the server, so that like, if you have new content or new changes, those will pop up because the cache will be invalidated, as well as it clears the Redis cache as well if you have Redis enabled. And it's sort of a one-stop shop to just like, clear all the caches and, uh, and get on with it. So a lot of times when you're developing, you'll, you'll hit that button a fair bit. Here, we'll hit it again just to get the juices flowing because it's early. Um, okay, so that's that's sort of the the sort of overview of the controls. Any sort of questions at this point on, on where we are? Awesome. All right, let's 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 write some code. So there's two ways to get access, like I mentioned, to to the site that are they're both both totally valid and reasonable. Both are gonna use Git in the end. Like everything in Pantheon puts it into version control. That's extremely important. But um, there's sort of two ways you can interact with that. So way one is just to uh, use Git directly. For those who are, um, who in this room is like feels pretty good with using Git? Like that's a nice, a nice development pattern. And some of the other people maybe new, new to Git or version control, which is to totally fine, totally fine. So like one of the things Pantheon tries to do, we try to make it really easy for you. So if you're a little more experienced, you can use Git from like the command line or in like a Git GUI tool and you get the information right here that you need. Um, it's also under the connection information. You can get the string. And what you could do, let's go to the desktop, git clone, and then I just drop that URL in. And this is actually going to go out to, our, to the Pantheon servers. And it's going to go uh, do a quick, um, let's get that bigger for everyone to see. Woo. And it'll go ahead and actually do a checkout. Um, I didn't have to type a password in, you noticed, when I did this, because I already have my SSH key uploaded to the, on the account page like I showed before, and it's just using that SSH key to connect. If I hadn't done that, it would have actually asked me for my password that I used to log in, and I could type the password, it would work just fine. So you don't have to use the SSH keys, but a lot of the stuff you're using with Git, you're doing a lot of, uh, of pushes and, and checkouts and stuff like that, so you, you know, you'll have to type it a lot uh, if you don't have a key. But um, it'll go ahead and do, do, a, do a checkout. And that's just pulling down that Drupal 7 code that I mentioned earlier with uh, the Pantheon modifications um, and, and getting it sort of on the desktop. Um, a lot of folks will use this to actually check it out to a local environment. Uh, we can definitely talk a little bit about how to get a nice local setup up and running. Um, that can be really nice if you're on airplanes or if you just want it to be like, like, like crazy fast because it's all like in one, one like Steve Jobs approved little, little box. But, um, uh, you can uh, you can sort of do a number of things with that, but it's a pretty, pretty quick checkout process even over the the conference Wi-Fi, and um, woo, and um, now we can go in, and we can see, and you can see something that should look pretty familiar to you. These are the this is all the the Drupal uh, the Drupal seven code, and it's just right there. Haven't made any changes changes to it yet, so uh, but I do have a, have a checkout checkout do a get status I'm on the master branch. Um, Pantheon uses the master branch for, for all of its uh, sort of development that's first stuff that's going forward into, into production. So um, if you're comfortable with Git, you can definitely use feature branches. As I mentioned, I'll show some of that stuff uh, in the UI in the second half of this. But um, you're welcome to use sort of feature branches on the command line, but the master branch is where, where all the magic happens. So you got to sort of get it back into there. But if you're just using a normal development workflow, you, you, know, you only have a few people on the team. Just all work on master, and you can you can have a pretty good time of it, because it's pretty easy to make changes. So we'll go ahead and just um, we'll add another thing to the change log. This is a new improvement to the change log, um, and you can see on Git. So we did a Git uh, a Git clone to do the checkout. 
I made a change using just a, a quick like text change. And um, now I hit get status, and it's saying, oh, you know, the change log is modified. I can run, yeah, well, I can run a, a git diff, and it'll show me, hey, I've added this one line to the, to the change log. And then I can go ahead and I can, um, I can do a git add for that file. So it'll, it'll, and then I can do a git commit with a message. This is a change to the site. And it actually go ahead and change it, changes it in git. If I do a quick log, you can see at the top, hey, Matt Cheney, um, this is a change to the site. Uh, you also, if you get into the git log and are browsing it, you can see here is the initial commit. This is when we actually installed Drupal for the first time. Um, and that gets to show up here. But you can also see back in the history, we've got some other stuff that uh, are changes to that code base. This is stuff that's coming from Drupal. Drupal itself, for each release of Drupal, will update it for you. And you have access to, to, the, to the information. We also keep, um, keep some Pantheon-specific modules in the code base. So one of the things that we have on the platform is we have support for the Apache for, the, for Solar Search, which if you haven't used it, it's super great. You can have these faceted search results, and, and you, the relevancy is a lot better. It's much faster. It can give you related stuff and things like that. Um, but we have a sort of a special Pantheon uh, search module that has support for the Apache Solar module and the Search API module. So we have the new version of Search API Solar came out, so we had some code code that was committed back in May to help support that. And you know, it goes on. And you can check that out if you want. But um, in general, in general, the stuff you're looking at is really just at the top of the list, because that's the stuff that's, um, that, you're, that you're up to. But if you don't want to do in the command line, we'll go, ahead, we'll, we'll go ahead and get push this up to, the, up to the server. One of the things that's really great is if, uh, oh, doesn't like me doing it, um, that it, this knows that I just did a commit. So I've, I've done up that commit. And I pushed it up. And without me even having to refresh this browser, it's gone ahead and, and pushed, pushed it up. So you see, here's a picture of me. Um, it's using my Gravatar, uh, my Gravatar icon. So that's just, um, you can, it has a normal just like empty, empty icon if, you, if not. But it knows it's me. It knows I authored the change uh, two minutes ago. And um, if I click on it, I can actually see right here in the UI a diff of what's changed. So obviously, I know that I made that change. But if I'm working on a team with more than one person, you can sort of start to see the kinds of changes people would make. And we'll make some more advanced kind of changes, changes later. But the idea here is that it's easy to like use, use Git if you sort of get everything running. And then when you push up changes, you can sort of see each of the sort of things that come out right here. And this is nice because it gives you a nice log of how everything's working. And you can see, yeah. Um, right now, it's a, uh, it's a uh, you have team permissions, but within the team, you're sort of a member of the team or you're not. So if you're a member of the team, you can do all the things I'm showing you. Um, if, uh, if, if, if you're not, you, you obviously can't do anything. We're having a permission. The one permission we are adding, which is sort of by pop popular demand, is there's some like pretty advanced operations like wipe the site and like delete the site entirely. And we're restricting that to like the site owner. So if you're the owner of the site, you, you're the only one that can delete it. So you, if you had a developer that was added that was like, I don't want to work on this project anymore, then um, uh, you, you, you can avoid that, you know, which um, it has unfortunately happened to a couple of people. We can restore that, but it's not obviously that much fun. Yeah. Theme is per site. Yeah. So this is um, uh, great, great. So this is per site. I'm the only one on this because, um, because I started it, and I'm the site owner. That's great. Um, I'll be the site owner until somebody else pays, whoever pays for it becomes the owner. So um, when it's in development, it's who created it. Afterwards, it's, it's, it's who owns it. But I can go ahead and I got my colleague Josh who's here. And you have to type in the full email address because we don't want any, like, anyone to like, discover other people's email on the platform. But Josh is, uh, has an account. And you can see it goes in and he's added to the team. Uh, he, I can remove him if I want or I can make him the owner. And now he has access on his account to everything that I just showed you. And he gets to access this site using his SSH keys. It shows up in his site dashboard. And he has the same kind of permissions as me, and so could actually make changes and sort of participate in the development process. And that's really awesome, because if you sort of uh, have a several different sites you're working with people, it's really easy to like add and remove the team members to your site. And that you know, when you start up a new project, you've got two of your friends, you're working on it, you just add both of them on Pantheon. And, and they're good to go. Yeah? So, so in your workflow now, 
let's say you want to run Drush and update a module or something like that, you're not having to do that local, right? Um, there's a SSH into Pantheon server, right? Uh, there's a few ways to do it. Um, you can definitely do it local. And I'll, I'll show you how to use the Drush and how to do some module updates in a minute. But um, yeah, you have a bunch of options. You could definitely do it on the server as well. Um, and, or you could do it through the UI as well. Um, and I have access to it, and now Josh has access to do, do those things. Um, if, for example, I invited somebody who was not like, our, like Josh already has a Pantheon account. If I invited someone who's new to Pantheon, like a developer that joined a project doesn't have a Pantheon account, it's actually, this is a pretty smart, uh, smart system. It'll actually go out and email somebody if they don't have an account and say, hey, Matt wants you to help participate in the development of this site. Please click here to sign up for a Pantheon account. It's free. And then they'll sign up. And as soon as they confirm their email address, they've, they've been added to the project already. So that's a nice way if you want to spin up a team. You don't, they don't have to have to go get Pantheon accounts first. You just email all of them, and they're good to go. And yeah, this is a per site permission set. So um, we're, we're, Josh and I are working together on this site. But if I spin up a new site, it could have totally different people. And that's the team. Um, OK. So for Git, we have um, uh, we, added, we added sort of the small change to the site. Let's go ahead. We'll add, um, we'll add, add, add some modules, modules to the site. So lots of ways to add modules to the Drupal site. Um, we'll probably show all of them as the course through this training. But the most straightforward way, my view, is you just go to the Drupal.org page. Um, we'll download Chaos Tools, one of my favorite modules. And we can just go ahead and um, do a quick wget. This will just pull it off of, of Drupal.org. We'll unarchive it. We'll add add C tool, or then we'll do a git status. You'll see C tools is untracked. We'll add C tools, and we'll go ahead and do a git commit. This is the chaos tools, and we'll push that up. And again, we can sort of see it's uh, it's pushing it up over the over the internet. It'll hit the Pantheon service. It knows that it's doing it. it has a nice backbone JS that can like push those things up, and now it's automatically deploying that module. Um, that module into our, our dev site. So if I was to go to the dev site here, which we started up, and go to modules, I would sort of see that um, we, now have, uh, we now have chaos tools uh, ready to go. So I can go ahead and turn it on. And well then, surprise, we've added this module to the version control. It's uh, now been enabled, and it's now running on this site. And it's all been happening pretty fast, which is good. So and you can see, hey, here's the commit. And then you can see um, that might take a while, all the magic that is the, the, the chaos tools. OK. So this, as I said, is a good way. If you're good at the command line to use Git, you can actually go ahead and, and use Git. And that's a, a totally good and reasonable way to, to work. If you need a little help with using some of the Git stuff, we have a, a bunch of information here about sort of how to use Git, including this important um, how to get started with Git. Uh, uh, support center article. So you can actually sort of see just, you know, it walks you through some of the, the basic kind of things here. Copy this URL, run this command, this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of really great info on the internet about how to use Git. And we can definitely do some changes uh, and other stuff today. We've got a link at the bottom to this Git tutorial that's, um, that's pretty nice. And this will actually go through like all the things that you're going to really be interested in um, uh, for Git, as well as having a couple a couple sort of cheat sheets if you just like need you know something to print out and uh, and understand. Git works very similarly to a lot of other version control systems if you've used CVS or SVN, but it has a has this really great sort of um, distributed branching system. So you can sort of work on on separate separate branches from other people, keeping keeping the changes uh, pulled in from the master one. But there's a sort of a basic way to use Git, which is just you know. Download, check out the Git code, make changes, commit them back, all keep on the same branch. But there's a lot more that's possible as you become more familiar. So if you're new to Git, just stick to the basic commands, add and commit. If you uh, have a little more sort of experience or want to sort of play around, download one of these cheat sheets or go through some of the documentation. And I'm happy to ask, answer questions as well about Git. But in general, Pantheon uses Git, loves Git, and supports, and, and supports, it, supports it thoroughly through the platform. Um, However, uh, you know, even that it can be a little a little daunting, um, especially on the command line. I mean, if you're used to working on the command line, no big deal. But a lot of people these days don't like to just you know use Vim and, and do command line stuff. They want to use more graphical kind of tools. So one thing that we've offered uh, is this option called SFTP mode, which is also known as on-server dev. 
And this is basically going to say, instead of having to do a git checkout of the code to actually pull down a local copy, let's go ahead and let you connect remotely to, to the Pantheon infrastructure. So this isn't like logging in with like root to the box, but it is connecting to all the files and stuff that you would want to use to do your development. So to get that up and running, you just, you just switch to SFTP mode up here at the top. And you can sort of uh, click on the help button. It's actually updated the information. So this is different than the Git, the Git help, of course. And what's really helpful is that now you can see it's giving us some information, host, username, password, port, and this kind of stuff. So um, one thing that you can do on a, uh, on a Macintosh or other, other kind of things, you can download an SFTP client. Um, this is uh, sort of a secure FTP. Um, I use Transmit for OSX. I like it a lot, but there's a bunch of other, other different clients. We have on our help desk um, some recommendations for like some other you know, kinds of clients you want. But if you have one you like, that's great. Um, a lot of IDEs also will integrate SFTP, so, and you can sort of just set up the, the credentials there. All you need to do is say, hey, here's the host name right at the top. So you throw that in for server. Here's the username. Throw it in for username. Here's the port. We use 2222. Uh, and then you can get the path. And then um, you can type in your, your password, either the password you use for the dashboard, or you can set it up to hook up to the SSH key. Either one will work. And if you hit connect, this is actually going out and connecting to the Pantheon, Pantheon network. And you can see right here, we've got all those, that same code that we checked out from Git is now available through SFTP. So just to sort of show you, sites all modules. And there we've got chaos tools right there. And this is super great because now I can actually interact with the code through this, um, this interface as opposed to, uh, opposed to having to do a full on checkout. And as I add stuff, it can actually change right on the platform. So for example, um, we can go back into that change log we were doing just as an example. I can actually edit it right in transmit. You can see this is a new improvement. This is another new improvement to the change log. And I can go ahead and save that. And if I save it locally, it actually, tra transmit will actually save it to the server and push up that change. Happened pretty fast, but, um, but that's what happened. And that's really cool because I made a small change here. And if I go back to, if I go back to my interface, Pantheon's detected that I've made that change. It, it knows that, hey, one file is ready to commit. Um, click here to sort of see. And you can see that it knows change log was modified. And it knows that it has, um, has e these additions. And I can click on that. And again, I can get a sort of diff of, of the change that's made. And this is really great if you're like, hey, I'm changing around some CSS. What did I change? Or I'm fixing a bug or something like that. You can sort of you know, work along with this. And it happens in you know, real time. So I can you know, sort of keep going, right? Like I can be like, oh, like this is you know, yet another change. And hit save and real fast it uploaded it. And now, and now we know that, hey, this actually had, had another change. And it sort of keeps up with that. And that's really great. A lot of people really like SFTP mode because it helps like, to do really fast development. Because I'm, the changes that I'm making are happening right here on this dev instance. I don't, I'm not doing them somewhere else and pushing them up. Um, and then uh, and that's sort of, you can sort of you know, create a whole backlog of work. We could also go ahead and um, uh, maybe we'll add, a, add, a, add some other stuff to this as well. Um, so maybe I want to do is, so I have chaos tools. Let's go ahead and we'll add one of my other favorite modules, which is panels module. And we'll go ahead and grab the link for this, but I'll just go ahead on the desktop and download it. So, I mean, this is if you're downloading off Drupal.org. See, here's the panels module. Here's all the code right here. But what I can do is just take the, the panels module I downloaded, go over to the SFTP, and you'll see it's actually going ahead and uploading that to the server. So it might take a, take a hot second, but it's basically saying, hey, take the code that I just downloaded Drupal.org and push it up. And this is a, a good one, another way to add modules if you want. So you can commit them to Git and push them, or you can just upload them through SFTP mode, and it'll go ahead and do that. Um, and I think that that will be, yeah. OK, so now it's, now it's uploaded. Here's a list of all my stuff. I can go back. I can see panels. And um, now if I go back to my SFTP mode, We'll see, actually, I have a whole lot of changes uh, because I just added that panels module, um, which is sort of nice. But this is all stuff. None of this, this work is all on the dev server, but it's not yet in version control because I've just been using the, the tools. But one of the really killer things that Pantheon lets you do is, hey, 
I want to add this stuff to Git. I want to be on the sort of version control. What you can do right here in the UI is you can actually add commit messages and add this stuff to Git directly. Without using the Git command line or even really even knowing you're using Git, you can just say, I added the panels module and made some changes to the change log.txt. And this is my commit message. And if I hit commit, Pantheon's actually going to go in. It's going to take all those changes that I've made on the on the uh, on server development, and it's going to go push them all um, all up to to the repository, so that I have a commit message that was what I typed. I have a change log of all the different changes that I that I made, and um, it's now in the in the Git version history. So if I am uh, someone else is on the project, and they're going to go in. Um, to the to the git to the git uh, checkout, you can see here's the the checkout we had. Do a git log. Um, I have the chaos tools, which is my last one. But if I hit git pull, it's actually going to go out and it's going to pull down that change um, to my to my git checkout. So anyone who's at it, who's connected to this site, who's working on it, can sort of get all those changes. This is in version control. It has its own own revision ID. And this is a really great way, if you're sort of new to Git and version control, but you want to use it, Pantheon allows you the ability to jump in and um, you know, use the tools you're already familiar with, things like SFTP and type in commit messages, and you sort of get, get, that, get that Git set up, and everything's, everything's great. Um, and you can toggle between the two modes. So you know, I'm in SFTP mode now. I can go back to Git mode. So I'm in SFTP mode um, and try to commit something with Git. It actually does, does yell at me. It's, um, it, uh, it'll, it'll tell me, so small change. So you see, I'm trying to go ahead and, and push that. It's actually going to say push rejected um, because dev is in SFTP mode. Um, you need to go ahead and, and, and enable it to actually do the commits. And yeah, user, uh, user uh, it's, it's site dependent. So this is, this is the mode that's set for, for the, just this site. But everyone who's using it has that same mode. Um, so yeah, so every so you're either developing the site in Git mode or you're developing an SFTP mode. Um, um, it is possible. You just have to toggle between them. Like for example, I can't do Git commits when it's in SFTP mode, but I could toggle from SFT. I could toggle back to Git mode, do my push. That'll go ahead and, and push to the platform um, that change. Then I can go back to SFTP mode. And then what happens if you're in SFTP mode and um, you don't do the commit message? Oh, gotcha. Yes. So the question is, what if I add stuff to the um, what if I add stuff to the to the repository but don't do anything? So let's go, we'll try that, right? So here's a quick README file. We'll, add, we'll edit that this is a README. And I've got this, and say I want to go to the Git mode, it'll actually do a warning and say, "Look, you can't, you can't. If you're going to switch out of SFTP mode with uncommitted work, it's actually going to lose that work for you, which may be what you want. Um, but uh, you can hit cancel to go ahead and actually commit that, or you could just continue and say, "Just blow it away. Um, I want to go that way." So a lot of teams will sort of toggle between the two when they need to, um, but. Uh, correct. If you're, yeah, in this way, um, and that and, and that that can be really fine. You have two themers who are both working on CSS files, especially they're both working on the server. They're both you know they can sort of refresh their local caches, the files every once in a while. But they both can see each other's changes, and they um, they can both sort of commit them all at once, and that that can be really helpful, just because you can sort of get stuff working um, easily. And these are the two options that we have. A lot of people use SFTP. A lot of people use Git. Both are both are particularly good good for development. And um, you sort of get, get up and rolling. All right. So that's how the, and, and all the changes so far we've made have all been on our dev site. So we'll go ahead and we can enable the panels module just because I like that. Um, it's all been on the dev site. But as, you, and as you're developing a site, totally reasonable, right? I want to do a lot of work on my dev site. And I want to um, I want to make sure all that stuff is sort of sort of good to go, but you know what happens when I actually want to sort of get further down the process? What happens when I actually have a production site and I want to start using these workflow tools tools uh, on Pantheon? One of the one of the key pieces of Pantheon is you have these different environments, so let's use them. 
Um, so we've done enough development on the site. We've got panels running, which is really all that, all that matters. And um, <laughs> now we want to go live. We've got panels. We can go live. So the um, first thing you got to do if you want to get the environments running is, by default, we just spin up dev, because all you need is dev to start. But as you want to start more environments, there's this, uh, there's this nice, nice yellow warning that says, hey, go create the test environment. So you click right here, and this will actually go ahead and say, OK, let me go take all of the code in dev uh, from the git. Let me push that, that up to the test environment. Let me take all the files that have been uploaded to dev, and let me take all the database from, from dev. And all of that goes into the test environment. So if we were to go up and see and click on um, test, test, uh, uh, test migrate Drupal site, you can see it is, it's different than dev and that I'm not, I'm not logged in. But, um, uh, it's got the exact same um, exact same content here, but if I was to go ahead and um, say edit this content and change it from another node to best node and hit save, we can sort of see hey this one's got a different piece of content than that, um, and that's uh, that's nice because now I have a test environment I can play around with and and sort of do stuff with. Same thing's good, true for the live environment. I can go ahead and hit live, clone. And that'll take all the, the database and the, um, and the files from, from test and push those to live. And you know, this, this is the kind of thing, too, that like, if you've done system administration, like setting up these different like, vhosts for each of the different um, environments, making sure that you have a workflow to like, do the Git deployments to each one, and like, having all that kind of stuff just sort of work takes actually a fair bit of effort. And one of the great things about Pantheon is you get that all for free just by having a developer account. And you don't have to set up, maintain, or any of that kind of stuff. So that's a, that's a key, a key win for sure. Um, but we have so we have the different um, different environments: dev, test, and live. And each of them have their own URLs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, each of them also have their own sort of set of settings. So we have the dev environment locked. So it's got that password we set up originally. But test environment is not yet locked. Um, so we could go ahead and, and quickly just add a lock to it, um, so that people cannot access our our site. Um, and that's, that's sort of important to know. Each of them has their own URLs. Each of them has their own, their own locking mechanism and stuff like that. And um, so now we have, we have live test. Let's go ahead and we'll, do, we'll just run a quick, a quick sort of commit through the process. So um, let's, go, let's go back to our change log. Another change. This is a small change. And this will go ahead and commit this. So everything that you're committing to Git is all going to dev. That's the only, only, only modification you can do is to the, the, dev, um, the dev branch. That's true for SFTP or Git. And that's by design. We want you to do your changes first in dev, then push them to test to test them, and then deploy them in production. And that's a really good, strong workflow. And we enforce that with the iron fist on Pantheon. So you cannot go to the live and make changes. You have to go through the workflow. But we make it really easy to do that. And that's one of the sort of the, the ways we want people to use Pantheon. We want you to use the best practice, but we don't want it to be hard. Yeah? So what if you uh, add a module to the standard service Uh-huh. Um, like, would that work in the SFTP organization code? Or? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the question is, hey, I want to use the UI uh, in Drupal to add a module. Uh, does, it work, does it work on Pantheon? How do you do it? So it does work on Pantheon. And yes, you have to go into SFTP mode for that. Um, if you go to SFTP mode, basically that makes the, the like, PHP file system uh, writable. And you can use the, the uh, updater or the installer from Drupal to download modules. You can use apps module, download apps. And you can use FTSFTP. Um, once you get the change uh, in, in there, you can sort of see all the changes here are both in test and live. But um, this change right here says one commit is ready to pull into test. If I go over the test environment, we'll see this great yellow box. And this is like also this is like one of the key like sort of cool things about Pantheon is that I have a change I've made in dev. It's ready to go be tested. I can see here or see what the change is. And I have the option to go ahead and, and pull that code from development. I also have uh, a couple options around running update.php and pulling files. Um, we'll go through that a little more extensively, but um, we'll go ahead and hit pull, co pull code from development. That's just taking. The, the, the most recent change in dev, throwing a special tag on it, and dropping in test. Yeah? So, so what if you make a change in dev and 
clearly it's a goof up. Yep. You, you hate to do a module. So now, now this thing is going to be telling you all the time, hey, you're going to do it. Yeah, well, I mean, so the C-Tools module is great. That would not be a mistake. But there are plenty of modules that would make a mistake. Um, <laughs> But that's one of the. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a really good point, right? Like, and that's why we want the testing in server there. We want you to go make sure that the the code change you just made, go to the environment and see did it break everything, because it, you know, might have. <laughs> um, Never. Now, well, um, you know, it depends what you do. Uh, if you don't, if if it's something you want to make, you want to get rid of, like say we didn't like that. Um, you know, one option is in, in, to go back to the, your dev environment and go go to the change log and say, oh, well, I didn't really like that. So you know, um, you know, I will just change it or whatever. Um, the other option is that Git, and this is a more advanced option, but there actually is the ability within Git to do, uh, to do reverts. So you can actually hit Git revert, and then you can go back to a previous version. So if you've made a lot of changes, but they're like total garbage, and that's not what you want, you can Git revert. And then um, we can go ahead and push that up. And now that's going to say, hey, um, let's go ahead and um, uh, let's go ahead and, and push that revert up to the to the, and that will that will undo what you just did. Yeah. Um, so the question is, is there ability to re remove the test instance? Um, there isn't the ability to remove the test instance, but there is the ability. You can definitely start from scratch. You can definitely um, uh, you can revert all the way back to the initial commit, and you can wipe the database and files. Um, the test instance is definitely supposed to be sort of, um, uh, uh, it's, it's not supposed to be permanent at all. The test instance is definitely going, uh, going to be a place where you're checking a lot of the live code and database and the dev uh, content to make sure it works. Um, so the dev instance gets blown away a lot. And in part two of this, I'll talk a lot more about, um, about sort of how, how the test instance can be used. Because there's some cool options about bringing the database and files from live into test and the code from dev up to, up to test. But just to sort of cap off part one of this, um, so dev test live, you can see I've got two changes to go to live. I got the ability to run update.php after pulling the code. That's something we can talk about. But Drupal has this update hook mechanism that sometimes modules have specific changes they want to make. Um, it's a definitely good best practice for workflows. We'll definitely talk about it part two. But for now, we have two changes. We'll hit pull code, and, um, uh, and that code will, um, uh, will get pushed over. And uh, now deployed to live. And we have, in the, in the span of about 45 minutes or 50 minutes, we've gone ahead, we've set up a Drupal site. We've like, gotten a couple modules that we think are great installed. We've like, gone set up dev test and live environments. We've added some security to them. We've added a team member to work with us on the project. And we've like, pushed a few things in between them. And now we have this live site running with, um, with all our, our different changes that we can log into. And it's on a special URL and stuff like that. So um, that is. So yeah, so that and that I think that and that was what I was looking to cover in part one. Um, it is if anyone wants to go uh, learn how to Twigify Drupal or how to sell Drupal, I would not be uh, would definitely not be upset if you um, if, if you had to, if you had to leave. But um, we'll take about a ha one minute break, or if people need coffee, um, I'll play one song and then we'll come back. And I'll teach, I'll teach about high performance tools. We'll talk Varnish and Redis. I'll talk about how to use the test environment a little more uh, proly. Uh, and we'll talk about how to maybe use this multi dev tool we're coming out with at Pantheon to have different feature branches. And I'll do any sort of questions people want. And um, we can go from there. But uh, everyone take, take a few minutes, and um, uh, we'll come back. <laughs>